in time, and I call the member for Braddon. Thank you very much, Deputy Speaker, and I welcome the comments of my colleague, who is a very strong advocate for the state of South Australia, and I'll be putting it in the context of my great state, the state of Tasmania, which seems to have been completely forgotten in this budget. I think I need to give every member of the coalition a map of Tassie, because it's completely been wiped off the national map, and I can't recall Tasmania actually succeeding to Antarctica or anywhere else. So this budget has been a huge disappointment for my state. In fact, it was even quite telling that the Treasurer's speech on the, the night of the budget didn't rate, uh, did not mention Tasmania once, not once. Um, the previous member, my colleague for um, the electorate of Kingston, actually talked about the lack of infrastructure project in her state. Well, I can tell you there was nothing new in the budget for infrastructure for Tasmania. In fact, what was in that budget? Was it for, for Tasmania? It was an $85 million cut to Tasmanian schools, including about $65 million cut to Tasmanian public schools, which the Premier of Tasmania, who was you know, obviously watching that budget on budget night, tweeted, What a great budget this is for the state of Tasmania. A cut to public schools. What a joke. The Medicare freeze remains in place for years to come, which will have a huge impact on the health of the people in Tasmania and in my electorate of Braddon. And as I mentioned, not one new cent for job creating infrastructure, continued attacks on our pensioners. And I have to say, I have a disproportionately high number of pensioners in my electorate, and they're certainly not happy. Massive cuts to TAFE considering where we are with uh, the huge reduction in apprentices and trainees in my electorate. That's very disappointing. And a higher cost to, edge to, uh, to higher education, um, particularly in my electorate when we do have low education um, outcomes, to try and then whack it on to higher education and say, well, I'm sorry, but you know, you're going to be paying more for this, sends a signal to the people that potentially you shouldn't be going to university, which is detrimental to my state. And just to rub their noses in it, Tasmania is a state with the lower than average wages than the rest of Australia, and with an increase in taxes, it's a huge hit, a huge hit. But on the other hand, the government is giving millionaires a tax cut. The priorities are completely wrong, and they could be no further wrong than in the state of Tasmania. On jobs, health and education, this budget is a failure for Tasmania and for my electorate of Braddon. From the young to the old, this government has spared no one. Is it little wonder that not one coalition minister, not one coalition assistant minister or even a parliamentary secretary has come to Tasmania since the budget? Not one visited the state. But I have to say, I can reel off, probably on two hands, the number of Labor shadow ministers that came to the state, including Leader Bill Shorten, including the Bill Buffs, came to Tasmania to tell the people what this budget meant for them. And it was disappointing for them to hear the facts. And only an alternative Labor government will deliver for my state. But I have to ask, why didn't they not come? Is it because they were too ashamed? Do they have nothing to sell the people of Tasmania? I think if you were to, uh, they're not really rhetorical questions, but I think if you were to answer those questions, your answer would be yes. This budget for Tasmania is a dud. Last week I spoke about the government's cuts to education and what it meant for Tasmanian schools. Today I want to talk about what these cuts mean in a social and economic sense for Tasmania. Economic commentators and local businesses are on the public record saying that improving our educational outcomes is the key to my region and the state's future. Sadly, Braddon and Tasmania generally have some of the worst educational outcomes in the nation. Writing in The Australian earlier this year, respected economist and University of Tasmanian Vice-Chancellor's fellow Saul Eastlake stated, and I quote, the proportion of Tasmania's population with a bachelor degree or higher is 6.2 percentage points below the national average, while the proportion of the population with no qualification beyond year 10 of high school is 10.4 percentage points above the national average. In December last year, Mr. S. Lake launched his second Tasmania report. 
a document that maps Tasmania's social and economic performance. The news headline from the launch of this report reads, Boosting engagement in education is the key to lifting living standards in the island state. In launching that report, Mr Eslake said the single most important thing that needed to be done in order to improve Tasmanians' living standards relative to those of other Australians was to increase the levels of educational participation and attainment. Mr Eslake went on to say, and I quote, higher levels of educational participation and attainment won't solve all of Tasmania's economic and social challenges, but they will make them less difficult to solve, not least by sustainably increasing the resources which can be used to solve them. So given the, economic, the social and economic challenges facing Tasmania, can anyone in this building explain why it makes sense to cut $84.4 million from Tasmanian schools in years 2018 and 2019. The silence is deafening. The coalition have said they were on a unity ticket with Labor when it comes to education. Remember that in 2013? They said they would match Labor's education funding dollar for dollar. Clearly, they were not being truthful. Labor's plan to fully fund the original needs-based funding model is already making a difference in my electorate and Tasmanian schools. In my electorate at Olverston High, as I said last week, the school association have told me that their additional needs-based funding has meant that they are able to provide extra support for students in literacy and numeracy, but most importantly, from my perspective, providing support for disengaged students. Mr Deputy Speaker, Olfson High, with the support of Labor's needs-based funding, is doing just what Saul S. Lake and others are suggesting. They are engaging in education, those very students who may fall through the cracks. The same students who, more than likely, will not go on to a post-year 10 qualification and most certainly will not go on to a tertiary education. It makes no economic sense to punish the students of Braddon by cutting, on average, 2.4 million from every local school. It makes no social sense to not support disengaged students as best we can. I'm running out of time, as, I, as the previous speaker said, there's so much to talk about. So let's go to TAFE. You would think investing in local skills should be a priority for this government, but again in this area, the budget is a dud. The budget cuts more than 600 million from TAFE and vocational education over the next four years. This comes on top of almost three billion in existing cuts to TAFE, skills and training since this government has come into office. As of September last year, when the National Centre for Vocational Education Research reported, Tasmania has lost 1,700 apprentices since the member for Warringah became uh, the, the Prime Minister back in 2013. It's not a great record. I challenge those opposite, particularly for those from regional areas, to step forward and explain how cutting a further 600 million from TAFE will help young people in their communities. The triple education attack on Tasmania's future in this budget is complete, with the decision by the coalition to cut university funding and increase fees. As I've already said, Tasmania has the lowest particip participation rates of any state in tertiary education. The University of Tasmania, or UTAS as it's known, is still assessing what a national cut of $3.8 billion will mean to them. On top of this, Tasmanian students are already facing significant barriers to tertiary education and now facing increased costs and demands to pay their hex debt um, at lower income levels. How on earth are they meant to get ahead in life? How on earth does it make sense for the government to invest $150 million in Labor's policy to support the expansion of UTAS in Launceston and Burnie, but at the same time send a signal to potential students that you will pay more to attend? On one hand, I do welcome the government's um, commitment in the budget to lift the cap on associate degrees, which is very important for the Cradle Coast campus of UTAS, but on the other hand, students will have to pay more. It just does not make sense. Let's just quickly move to health. That's a very important issue for Tasmanians and one where we are now seeing under a Liberal state government and under a coalition national government, a crisis in our health system. 
Braddon has an ageing population and disproportionate number of people who are on benefits. They rely on Medicare to support them. We are seeing in Tasmania bulk billing rates continue to drop. People are paying more to see the doctor. You only have to go around to the GP clinics in my area to see the signs at their reception telling people that they will no longer be bulk billed. The community still has to wait until 2020 for relief on the cost of going to see a doctor, if at all. And they have to wait more than two years for the freeze on specialist procedures and allied health services to be lifted. On this issue alone, the budget fails the people of Braddon. I might quickly move on to some of my last comments, because I am running out of time. We could talk on this all day long. So let's go to infrastructure. Now, you would think infrastructure is a mechanism for growing, some, growing a state's economy, actually creating the jobs that we need in our state. But the important job creating projects like the Cradle Mountain Master Plan, which is in my region and a number one priority for all my local councils, did not see any additional funding under this government, which is quite strange because the previous tourism minister under the previous, um, in the previous parliament was from my electorate, from the state of Tasmania, and there's no additional money for this project. This project, according to Deloitte Access Economics, uh, will generate about 140 long-term jobs and $29 million per annum of additional economic activity into my region which is a, a rural and a regional community. This is massive for the people in my electorate. Despite commitments from the state government and the federal opposition, the best this government can do is a measly $1 million for a feasibility study. This is a project that is a public-private partnership, potentially of $160 million, and this government does not send any signal to private investors that this project is worth funding is worth putting their money into. And I can tell you now that is not the opinion of the opposition. But even this study has not been completed. Again, you have to wonder what the state government has been doing to secure additional Commonwealth investment. Clearly nothing. To top things off, not one cent has been offered for important road upgrades on the Bass Highway at La Trobe or between Marawa and Wynyard. Fixing the entry and exits off the Bass Highway at La Trobe will open up that community's industrial estate for development, giving further job opportunities. I am sure my colleagues in Bass, Lyons and Franklin will also highlight the infrastructure neglect by this government in their electorates. It really demonstrates the coalition has abandoned Tasmania. But the state government's response has been weak, if not laughable. While well, every other state's education minister, including the coalition's state of New South Wales, criticises the budget, Tasmania's premier and education minister have welcomed it. It just goes to show how the Hodgman government does not have the gumption to stand up to the prime minister like his other colleagues in other states. Bungling infrastructure minister at state level, Reen Heating, also promised he would fight for a better deal with infrastructure projects again a failure. I have to ask the question, what are our Tasmanian Liberal senators actually doing? I, I don't know. I don't see them. I don't hear from them. They, they, the silence is deafening from them as well. And as I have said before in this place, Braddon has a disproportionate number of pensioners and an ageing population. So how does this government want to treat them? Make people have worked in some of the most challenging circumstances at sea, underground, on the land or on the factory floor work until they are 70. In many cases, this will not be physically possible. And to top it off, the government remains committed to axing the clean energy supplement for pensioners. The Prime Minister says that this budget is about fairness. He can say the word, but the reality is for pensioners in Braddon, this budget is not fair. Mr Deputy Speaker, this budget is about choices. You can choose to look after people or you can choose to look after big business. And this government chooses to give away $65 billion to big business while cutting almost $85 million over the next two years from Tasmanian schools. It chooses to give millionaires a tax cut while a person in my election on the average income will face a tax hike. The government chooses to still make the sick and elderly pay more to see a doctor. 
Clearly, none of this is fair. When I talk to people in my electorate, it is clear what choices they would like to see. Investment in health, in schools, in hospitals, jobs and infrastructure, and that is not happening.